But this notating method completely fails the resurface test in the after phase. I would need to purposely dig through this one long document to find the note that I need when I need it. You know, if someone told me 10 years ago that I would one day make a video on the boring, depressingly tedious, soul-sucking topic of note-taking, I'd say, sounds about right. Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna first share the three components of effective note-taking systems, then move on to how I currently structure my personal notes in Notion, before finally walking you through a specific template. Starting with what makes a good note-taking system. In my humble opinion, the less friction you experience during the process, the more effective the note-taking system. And if you break it down, there are really just three components to the note-taking process before, during, and after. In the before phase, it's about how easy it is to start taking the note. Do you need to click multiple times to open up a blank page and wait five to 10 seconds for the application to load? Are you unable to take notes on the go when you're in a car or bus because you don't have a suitable mobile app? In the doing phase, it's about how quickly you're able to get your thoughts down on paper or on whatever medium that you're using. Do you have to change the default formatting every time before you can actually start typing? Do you have to manually highlight or bold important words throughout the process? It sounds obvious, but all of this slows down the speed at which you're able to get your content down, right? In the after phase, it's about how you can resurface relevant notes when the situation calls for it. And this is actually the hardest part. And it's this part that made me realize the default noting system I was taught back in the day is pretty ineffective. For example, I used to exclusively take notes on Word documents. So let's put this to the test. In the before phase, it's easy to create a new document using the shortcut doc.new. Okay, cool, check. In the during phase, it's a little awkward because in order to record the date and topic for each note, I would have to manually uh, copy paste and make changes. I guess I can live with that. But this noting a method completely fails the resurface test in the after phase. As you can see, I take my notes in reverse chronological order. So I input my most recent notes up top. And the topics are extremely diverse, right? I could be writing down highlights from a coffee chat that I had, summaries from books and articles that I read, and maybe even video ideas after watching the latest upload from Ali Abdal. And the reason why this fails the resurface test is that I would need to purposely dig through this one long document to find the note that I need when I need it. And this is assuming I would even remember I took a note about that in the first place. Like for example, it wasn't until I scrolled all the way down for this video uh, did I remember that I took notes about YouTube SEO back in June 2020. And this is something I could have used recently. Two things before I jump over to my Notion setup. First, this amazing video is still not being sponsored by Notion for some reason. And second, as long as you have those three boxes checked before, during, and after, the application you use doesn't really matter. Notion, for me, has the features that do a really good job of decreasing friction when I take notes. Essentially, my note-taking system is made up of a back-end and a front-end. The back end is just five different notebooks that together cover all aspects of my personal life. I call this a back end because it's sort of like the infrastructure. I set this up once and don't really touch it again. The front end represents the different projects that I'm working on. For example, if I'm looking to rent a new apartment, the notes that I take and planning I do would be for that project. Or if I'm taking notes for a podcast, book an article, that'll be another project. And I call this a front end because I'm interacting with these on a daily basis. In my Notion setup, the back end, the notebooks, are just Notion databases. And the front end, the projects, are just Notion pages. Let's just walk through a specific example. So this is the back end of my note taking setup. If you watch Thomas Frank, this will look familiar. Yes, I basically stole his notebook structure and added some Jeffsu magic to it. In all seriousness, huge thank you to Thomas Frank. I'll link his video down below. Now, if I go to my platforms notebook here, this is just a repository of notes I take on what type of content I should output on the different platforms. 
uh, you'll see, for example, YouTube, Instagram, Clubhouse. And this is just a list of notes, right? With some labels on the right-hand side here. The first one is notes I took while watching Vanessa Lau's video on her YouTube strategy. A uh, couple properties here. So the platform, she was talking about YouTube. So I'll obviously select YouTube. For status, I choose resurface because after completing the note, I know I want to refer back to her advice later on. If it's something I know I don't have to come back to, I would just select archive. Now to quickly summarize, all notes begin with the open status here. And after completing it, you choose to either resurface it or forget about it. And then there's the URL created in updated properties, but nothing too fancy here. For the note itself, you can see I have three different sections. I like to use the call feature up top to highlight the one key takeaway after taking the note. And you can do this by typing forward slash call out. Uh, the action items I need to take immediately after taking the note and the notes themselves. So for this specific example, as I'm watching the video, I'd be taking the notes here, then determining whether there are any action items before finally summarizing the one key takeaway up top. As you can see, my note taking workflow goes from bottom up, but I know when I revisit this, I'll be naturally reading top down. So this setup makes sense. Does that make sense? Let's pause right here and see how this stacks up to the before, during, and after tests I talked about earlier on. Let's say I were listening in on a clubhouse room and I got an idea for my own next clubhouse event. I could simply start a new note by clicking the down arrow here, choosing the template that I've created beforehand, give that a title, clubhouse, clubhouse idea, just invite Elon Musk, easy and choose a platform, clubhouse, status open, no URL, I can start typing the notes. So the friction is pretty low for the before and during phases thanks to the template feature. But what about after? This still doesn't solve the issue of resurfacing relevant notes when I need them. And this is where the front end comes in. In Notion, I have a Notion page dedicated to content strategy. And this is where I break down the different platforms I create content for. I visit this overview page every other day to remind myself what I need to do next. And you might notice on the right hand side here, you see the exact same notes from the platforms notebook we just went over. Vanessa allows advice, the clubhouse idea. And I did this by using the linked database feature. If I type in forward slash linked database and search for the platforms notebook that we just went over, you'll see the backend database pop up here. Now, this by itself may not be very useful, but look what happens when I click into YouTube page here. We have the same platforms database on the right, but only the notes related to all platforms and YouTube are visible. This means as I work on my YouTube plan, I can quickly and easily reference notes I've taken in the past for YouTube. The way to do this is still use the linked database feature. So for slash linked database, search for platforms database, and add a view here, choose a list. Let's name this uh, YouTube last updated, click create. In the three dots here, you want to choose filter, add a filter group here. Uh, the first one is where a platform contains all platforms or platform contains YouTube, obviously. Add another filter where the status is not archive because we only want to see open and uh, resurface. Uh, click out and then choose sort, add a sort, uh, I like to have updated descending so I see the most recently updated note up top here. And boom, there you have it. And if I'm already on my YouTube page and I wanted to take a note, I wouldn't have to navigate back to the back end. I would simply click new here. The YouTube label is already pre-populated. I can click the template that I've made beforehand. The status gets updated to open and I can start typing. YouTube is so fun that I lost my voice. By the way, it's totally okay to have multiple open status notes at the same time. What I like to do is to actually create a view for open notes specifically so I know which ones I still need to complete. And again, after completion, you wanna change the status to resurface or archive depending on what you want to do with it after. As usual, I've created a template for you all to use right away. Some quick instructions. I've just created one notebook here and you can duplicate as many as you need. 
Within this notebook, I've also already created uh, a template, a note template with the properties and uh, headers that I went through in this video. Now onto the front end portion, I've created one project here as an example. Uh, for my projects, I like to have a call out at the very top here that reminds me what the ultimate objective of this project is. And I like to have three sections on the left here. Uh, first, what the top of mind items I have, again, for this project the immediate action items I need to take, and finally, quick links to other pages that might be relevant or related to this project. And after I've completed the action items, I'll usually just highlight them and drag it to the archive page down there. Interestingly enough, I do not use Notion at all to take notes for my day job. So if you wanna know why and see how I have that note-taking system set up, please comment down below and I'll make a video on that topic as well. See you on the next video, and in the meantime, have a great one.